no queen in recent memory has had a bigger change in perception by the fandom than Miss Jan Sport. I asked you guys for your overall thoughts on Jan on my Instagram, and this is what just some of you had to say. Used to like her, but she is starting to annoy me. Textbook people pleaser, which isn't inherently bad, but just not great on RuPaul's Drag Race. Don't come for me, I didn't like her on season 12, and I don't like her anymore on All Stars 6. I don't understand her edit in All Stars 6. It is like a redemption arc, but making her dislikable. I mean, the second that she got her win and lost her robbed queen status, the fans turned on her. The <laughs> villain of the season. I don't know, she definitely feels very different than season 12 Jan, like she knows how to play the cameras. She's so hated now, but I understand why everyone is frustrated with her. I like her, but she's coming across as fake. I love her, and I feel like she's getting mistreated this season, but it's so entertaining. <laughs> she's pissing me off badly since season 12. Her energy is just too much. Very energetic, but sometimes a bit delusional. So how did Jan become the new punching bag for the Drag Race fandom? And were producers really trying to make her snap on All Star 6? We will get into all of that in this video, but first, make sure you are following me on my Instagram and my Twitter, and I'm sharing all of my thoughts on All Star 6 there. Also, if you are able, make sure to check me out on Patreon. I want to say, just right off the bat, this video is in no way an attack on Jan Sport. I think I've made it pretty clear on my channel what a gigantic fan I am of Jan. Everything I am discussing in this video is in the context of how she is edited on a television show. Any nasty comments towards or about Jan will be deleted, and I encourage you all to support this queen, and all of the queens rather, in any way that you can, as especially we all know Jan right now is having a pretty rough time on social media. Whether it's just leaving her a nice comment on her Instagram, or buying her merch, which is adorable, I might add. Here's me feeling my jantasy. Or even book a cameo. It's just nice to support the queens, especially the ones that are having kind of a rough go around this season. I went back and forth if I even wanted to make this video. The last thing I want to do is perpetuate more negativity towards a queen who is unfortunately on the hate train right now. But Jan's two-season story arc on Drag Race is just a very interesting case study into how the show edits a queen and how that edit has a direct impact on the fandom's treatment of said queen. Jan was one of the biggest fan favorites on season 12. She was the robbed goddess of the fandom and despite only getting 8th place, came off the season as one of its breakout stars. Fans could not get enough Jan. She consistently pulled huge numbers during her Instagram lives, her face crack moment became the biggest meme of season 12, and to this day, her considered robbery in the Madonna Rusical Challenge is one of the most controversial topics to bring up in the Drag Race fandom. So when she was immediately brought back for All Star 6, I don't think any of us were that surprised. She still had a lot to show and made great TV, but the direction the story producers have taken her story on All Stars has made the fandom take a complete 180 on Jan, and unfortunately, like what happens on every season, she is the queen singled out by the fans, or fans, to become the target of massive amounts of hate and scrutiny online. Now, I do want to make a quick note. Jan is not a queen of color, and in the big picture, the amount of hate she's been dealing with is nothing compared to the hate many queens of color with bad edits on the show have faced in previous years. I in no way want to diminish how disproportionate the hate towards a white queen like Jan and the hate towards a queen of color like a Silky Nutma Ganache or a Raja O'Hara is. But on a season where there are a lot of queens who were singled out and attacked by the fandom following a poor edit on their original season, they are all getting positive edits now and becoming fan favorites, the Rajas, the Eurekas, the Silkies, and Akiryas. And instead, Jan is being singled out in the edit as the villain, although the edit is more like the delusional queen edit rather than the villain edit. Let's start from the beginning of this story. Jan's time on season 12, which made her such a fan favorite to begin with. Also, I really wish I could include like clips and stuff, but Viacom will demonetize my ass in a heartbeat, so you're just gonna have to hear my voice this whole time, <laughs> so sorry about it. Jan's first episode on season 12 
actually perfectly encapsulates her entire drag race arc perfectly over both seasons. She comes in high energy, she literally has to explain her entrance line because it is such a niche reference, and in the judging, she's told she's great, but maybe was trying to do too much. It also pretty much sets up her robbed queen narrative right from the start on that season. I remember how pissed everyone was when she wasn't chosen as top two for that you don't know me challenge. After giving two awesome runway looks and a verse that is still referenced and in the drag race vernacular to this day, fans rightfully thought she deserved a place in the top two of that episode. And this moment I think was critical in Jan's journey to being a fan favorite. When a queen is judged unfairly right off the bat in the first episode they appear, it's easy for fans to gravitate towards them and call them underrated and hype them up. The same thing happens with Rock'em Sakura in this episode. The next few episodes of season 12, Jan consistently has solid performances in the challenges. World's Worst, The Ball Ball, The Gaze Anatomy Challenge, and to a lesser extent Snatch Game. She does well each week but she's not the main character of the season, and we only see fleeting moments of her here and there. But what is consistent is her positive attitude, her peppiness, and her solid performances. Now, a very easy editing trick that producers can use to make us feel any type of way that they want about a queen is for other queens to give their opinions on said queen. The weird thing about Jan's edit for the first five episodes she's in on season 12 is we barely hear what any queen thinks of her. We have a little moment with Shitty Pie telling us how talented she is, and Britta tells us that they're friends, but we don't get queens saying, oh, Jan is so this, Jan is so that, like we normally do. So that kind of leaves the audience to be able to make very natural and real opinions of her as the season went on. We don't think she's fun and our little cinnamon roll because that's what the queens are telling us. We think that because we came to that assumption ourselves. Now, obviously, Jan's big story arc starts in the seventh episode with the Madonna Rusical. And I've talked about this in the rigory of season 12, but the episode really builds Jan up as the winner of the challenge and like this being her moment and fakes the audience out and fakes Jan out. That way, when she doesn't win the challenge like she thought she was going to, we're all just as shocked as her. I mean, that face crack moment, it's iconic for a reason. It's amazing. But it resonated with people, and the whole Drag Race fandom for the next week was building Jan up as the robbed queen of the season. And honestly, her losing that challenge was the best thing for her career at this point. When you have a queen become such a sympathetic figure to the viewer, their popularity is going to skyrocket because of it. Would there be this huge push for Jan being an underrated icon if she had won that challenge? No, she would have won. Everyone would have said, good job, Jan, and everyone would have moved on. But instead, I think the bond that fans had with Jan was strengthened monumentally because of this moment. Because we saw that heartbreak right in front of us. And we all have felt that way at some point or another. So now, Jan is robbed. Jan is underrated. The show is rigged against Jan. Jan for All-Stars. Jan is going to win All-Stars. And here's what's very interesting to me. As we move on to the eighth episode of season 12, her edit is eerily similar to her edit on All-Stars 6. The only difference is the fan reaction to it. Let me read you what some of the other queens had to say about Jan in this episode. Jada tells us, Yeah, she's a little salty that her best friend just went home, but I'm thinking she's more upset that she didn't win this challenge. Jackie says, When Jan is frustrated and has things on her mind, she goes into this voice and you can tell things are bothering her. I think everything is starting to get to her. We also hear Britta say at the end of the previous episode, Jan is killing it. This is what Jan does. She went to an expensive music school, and this is what she does. This is her time to shine. Jan also thinks she's better than people, and sometimes you have to remind her, get that bitch in check. I mean, let's be real. Jan's delusional edit began way before she even got the call for All Stars 6. But because she had been built up this time as a hero, as a sympathetic figure, we really didn't care. We could justify her behavior because we felt bad for the position she was in. But wow, this episode 
buries her. I mean, just the preview for her elimination episode for season 12 literally shows a montage of her sobbing with dramatic music behind it, making her look like a literal crazy person. And then the critiques from the first episode where she was doing too much come back into play, and the judges basically tell her she's an annoying theater kid and send her ass home. Jan did not get a good edit on season 12 when you look back at it. She's built up from the start as this peppy theater girl who is desperate to do well and prove herself, and then the second she loses a challenge that she thought she had in the bag, she basically loses her mind and flames out the next week. Now, looking at the episode, which we've talked about, any combination of Jan, Widow, Gigi, and Shitty Pie could have been in the bottom that week. They all didn't do well, none of their commercials were good, but production's decision to put Jan next to Widow in that lip sync I think was very deliberate and finishes out her story arc by sending her home in the episode she cracks. And it was amazing TV. Seeing Jan act completely delusional this episode, sobbing over losing, but then telling the girls it's because Britta went home, and then going so hard in the challenge trying to course correct, it was amazing storytelling, and in the end, people I think just felt bad for her. So we have our robbed goddess, our social media icon. She's selling out digital drag shows left and right post-season. She's dropping merch here and there. Fans are eating her up because everyone loves an underdog. And her track record on season 12 painted her as a huge one. People were willing to overlook the delusional moments because she had been set up previously as someone to root for. And then it all comes crashing down. All Star 6 happens. We've seen this exact story happen with both Milk and Latrice in previous All-Star seasons. The iconic fan favorite comes back, gets a bad edit, and the fandom turns against them pretty quickly. But I think that in this case, it's so jarring and shocking to see it with Jan because the rise and fall all happened in like a little over a year. It's pretty wild to witness. And it makes an excellent case study for the drag detective to investigate. So, Jan is announced for All-Star 6. Fans are pumped. She has the biggest following of any queen on the season on social media. The highest Instagram followers. She's one of the biggest fan favorites. I don't think it's bold to say that she was a front runner in the eyes of the fandom heading into the season. I mean, in my All-Star 6 patron draft, she had, I think, the fourth amount of people pick her in their draft. So she was a pretty big figure going into the season. People had high hopes for Jan. Now, I want to highlight Jan's first confessional of the season right after she walks into the workroom. She says, On my season, through my eagerness to win this competition, I came off as completely unhinged at an 11 the entire time. I think last time I needed to prove that I had everything it takes to be a winner, but this time I need the judges to see it because I see it and that's what it takes to win. So we see Jan acknowledges her missteps from season 12. All right, solid. But we'll see pretty soon that those demons are going to come right back pretty quickly. And the first two episodes, I think, are actually great for Jan. She's considered robbed by the fans in both episodes. The discourse over Jan being an underrated legend comes back. This is all great for her career moving forward. Like I said, being seen as robbed in the eyes of the fandom is sometimes better than even winning the challenges. So Jan is set up great to continue her fan favorite status moving forward. Something else interesting that starts to be discussed around this time are the claims that producers are trying to make Jan snap on purpose. There was a lot of talk that they were going to keep Jan safe every week until she had another face crack moment like on season 12. And I think this is important to highlight because it shows that the fandom does acknowledge the producer interference, although they only seem to bring it up when it benefits someone they're like standing in the moment. So... But overall, we see almost none of Jan in these first two episodes of All Stars. She doesn't get any more development and even a really emotional moment between her and Rue in the workroom about her grandfather gets relegated to a quick flashback moment in Untucked. So the fans still see Jan just as they did on season 12. I think you can break down her journey on All Star 6 in three arcs. 
episodes one through three are the typical robbed Jan that we all know and love. The villain origin story, if you will. Episode four is her shining moment, her win. What everyone asked for all along now becomes the turning point. And then episodes five through seven are we're on full Jan hate train. And also what will be the end of her two season arc on Drag Race. Episode three, we see her in the bottom with her entire team and delusional Jan sort of makes her first appearance on the season. She says that she doesn't deserve to be in the bottom, and the other queens kind of start to get annoyed with her for the first time. Akira, especially at the start of episode four, calls her out and is like, girl, you deserve to be in the bottom, shut up. Episode four is really the first time Jan is a main character this whole season so far. We get some of her backstory, we get to hear her thoughts and feelings a lot in the confessional. Really, this entire episode feels like it was made for Jan. Another Rusical, she gets to play her idol, Lady Gaga, she absolutely slays the challenge and the runway, and Jan gets her first win. The Robbed Queen storyline is over. Except, fans very quickly turned this story on its heels, instead of the reception being excitement for Jan winning the Rusical and avenging her time on season 12, it becomes Jan didn't deserve her win, and the episode was rigged for her. Wow. I don't think the producers expected that, and honestly, I didn't either. When I watched the episode, I was expecting social media to be thrilled and everyone to be rallying around Jan, happy to see her finally get her moment. I was, like, shook, to be honest, when I saw the general vibe was that Jan was given the win for storyline and that she didn't deserve it. And then things started to spiral. Toot toot! All aboard the Jan hate train. I think a few factors led to this complete flip in opinion. One part, I think, was Silky's pretty scathing remarks against Jan online and in interviews. She calls out Jan for lip syncing in the talent show and then bringing in a blue corset that she used for her ball look from home. And for people looking to discredit Jan's track record on the show, people took that and ran with it. Another part, I think, was Jan's reaction to being in the bottom the previous episode. We have the other queens reacting pretty negatively to Jan's perception that she just didn't deserve it. And Akira and Pandora especially mirror what the edit is trying to tell us, which is Jan is delusional. Like I said, hearing other queens' thoughts on another queen is a great way for producers to kind of guide the audience's opinion. And with many of the queens on the show highlighting Jan's delusion, it's not hard to see why the audience latches onto this and runs with it the way that they did. Another part is that the queen Jan allegedly robbed of a win was Trinity K. Bonet, who along with Raja and Scarlett are the fan favorites of All Star 6. So just like how Gigi got a lot of hate for robbing fan favorite Jan of a win, now Jan is getting the treatment Gigi got. We've really come full circle. The last part of why I think fans turned on her so hard is the womanizer lip sync. <sighs> okay, it was pretty cringy. But I do think it was purposely edited that way to make Jan maybe look worse than it maybe really was. Huge parts of the song are just completely edited out, so we keep jumping to the parts where Jan is doing that weird robot move. That makes it look like she just does that bit the whole time. But there's like these huge gaps in the song where we have no idea what Jan did. And her losing that lip sync so badly gave people reason to discredit her win overall and even her talent as a queen. People went so far as to chastise her for taking a comedic approach to a Britney Spears song in the wake of Free Britney and calling that insensitive. It got pretty nasty online very quickly. And really, it's because the robbed queen narrative was over. She wasn't robbed anymore. She got a win. And because the edit is telling us she's delusional and hearkening back to the milks and the latrices of All Stars, fans were pretty quick to jump on the train saying Jan robbed Trinity of a win and she just isn't good as people say she is. Jan then doubles down on social media, calling out the haters, correcting Silky's comments she made against her, and I think that just becomes fodder for people to use against her. People call her entitled and unable to take the criticism. 
Add in the fact that episode five is not a good episode for Jan, and she stays over the huge fan favorite and the new robbed queen, Scarlet Envy, it's curtains for Jan. We see in episode five that Jan truly just does not understand the critiques she's been getting from the judges and from her fellow competitors about her not being able to tone down her personality and just be real. So episode six comes, and she has one of the best performances of the week, playing like a Leah Michelle type character in Rumerican Horror Story. But then her performance is discredited by people saying the role was just made for her, and of course she was going to do well. It was rigged in her favor. And now, spoiler alert, she goes home in episode 7. On a girl group challenge. After Pandora's lipstick was pulled first and she thought she was safe, I wasn't convinced of the rumor that producers were trying to make Jan snap, but this episode was rough on her. Maybe there is some truth to that after all, because, like, damn. Another moment I want to highlight are Jan's final words in The Confessional after her elimination. She harkens back to something Milk said on her elimination back on All Stars 3. Jan basically says that America doesn't want to see her go, and they want to see more from her. Yeah, definitely not the most humble thing to say on your way out. But watching Untucked, we see a different confessional where Jan is really sweet and emotional, talking about her time on the show and how grateful she was to have a second chance. It's really nice. And I think this is just the final nail in the coffin for me and my little theory that production was set on giving Jan the delusional edit and hoping she would snap. There was no reason they had to include that delusional and cocky moment they did in the episode when there was a perfectly sweet and heartwarming moment we saw from her in Untucked that they could have used instead. They were very clearly planning to bury her in the edit, and yes, of course, she said what she said, and it was cocky and delusional, but having her that be her final words in the episode are of course going to leave a bad taste in the mouth of viewers, and they chose to include the shady moment over the heartwarming moment. The producers were not feeling the jantasy this season, they made that very clear, and in response, nobody else was either. I just hope that the consensus after the season ends and all of the discourse dies down is that Jan just went back too soon and is a talented queen who just has some growing up to do before she reaches her full potential. Overall, the parallels between Jan's time on season 12 and her run on All Stars are wild. She really ends up getting the same edit which makes it even stranger how she came out of one season a fan favorite and the other the punching bag to the fandom. Again, I want to highlight that there are plenty of other queens, mostly queens of color, who have gotten much harsher edits from the show and much worse treatment from the fandom. I just thought that this very sudden heel turn in the perception of Jan was interesting to dissect for a video. I really think Jan is the most clear and concise example of how editing impacts the perception of a queen in the eyes of the fandom. When Jan was left as the robbed queen on season 12, she's beloved. But when she's no longer seen as robbed, and instead robs the new robbed queen, can I saying that five times fast, she is turned on in an instant. I just want to finish off this video with a reminder that it takes way more effort to be mean and nasty to someone than to just say nothing at all. Thank you guys for watching. Obviously, this has been a crazy season. It's been so good, and we are in, like, the final stretch now. I think we only have five episodes left, so I'm very excited to see how it ends. Here are all of my socials, and thank you to all of my patrons, as always. It has been a long day solving the mystery of how Just Jan became Just Jerk. That was really bad. I couldn't think of a better J word. It's fine. I hope all of your weeks are jantastic.